Thank you for dropping by for my daily devotions. And it is Saturday, January 28th, 2023. Hope you'll subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, make comments, do everything you can to help me get this out to as many people as I can. Revelation chapter 18, Acts 1, Psalm 69, and Isaiah 63. As we wind down the book of Isaiah, let's pray. Father, speak to us through these amazing, amazing passages of Scripture. Um, I pray that you just uh, speak to our hearts, write your word there, and apply it to us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us new because of you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 18th chapter of Revelation, the fall of Babylon the Great, collapse of world governments and stuff. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a home of demons and a haunt of every evil spirit, a haunt for every unclean and detestable bird. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Mix a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torture and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit as, a, as queen, I am not a widow, and I will never mourn. Therefore, in one day, her plagues will overtake her. Death, mourning, and famine, she will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord who judges her. Going to judge Babylon. Really stands for world governments and stuff. When the kings of the earth, who committed adultery with her and shared her luxury, see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her, over her terrified at her torment, they will stand off and cry, Woe, woe, O great city, O Babylon, city of power. In one hour your doom has come. Hang on, folks. That's coming. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys her cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth. Every sort of citron wood and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, marble, Cargoes of cinnamon and spice, of incense, myrrh and frankincense, of wine, olive oil, of fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, bodies and souls of men. Part of the, uh, the uh, business of people was the bodies and souls of men. Think that might have something to do with slavery? Still going on today, maybe more than ever. They will say, the fruit you longed for is gone from you. All your riches and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. The merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand far off, terrified at her torment. They will weep and mourn and cry out, Woe, woe, O great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. It doesn't matter. It'll be destroyed. It'll be judged. Every sea captain and all who travel by ship and sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off. When they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, Was there ever a city like this great city? They will throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out, Whoa, whoa, O great city, where, uh, where all of you... Uh, were all who had ships on the sea become rich through her wealth? In one hour she has been brought to ruin. Rejoice over her, O heaven. Rejoice, saints and apostles and prophets. God has judged her for the way she treated you. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, With such great violence, the great city of Babylon will be thrown never to be found again. The music of harpists and musicians, flute players and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No workman of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's great men. 
By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and all who have killed, you have killed on earth. Judgment's coming. Judgment's coming to the world powers. It's governmental powers, commercial powers. The judgment is coming because they've abused people and have ignored God. Acts chapter 1. Great, great, great stuff. Acts chapter 1. In my former book, Theophilus, and he's referring to the um, um, book of Luke. Luke is the author of, of Luke and Acts. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. <laughs> After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Why? Because he was alive. He'd been raised from the dead. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them his this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord... Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times and dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will, will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit gives us power to bear witness to Jesus. We need to get at it. We have the power, no question. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, Jan, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested, who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. With the reward he got from his, for his wickedness, Judas bought a field, there, and there he fell headlong. His body burst open and his intestines spilled out. Everyone, he, he hung himself, and then he fell from, the, from where he hung. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their, in their language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood, for said Peter is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore it is necessary for us to choose men who have been with us from the time of the, the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism at the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen and to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go to where he belongs. And they cast lots, and the lot fell on Matthias. So he was added to the, to the 11 apostles. Powerful, powerful power. Fundamental understanding in that, in that chapter. You could spend a lot of time on it. And then Psalm 69. Another Psalm of David. And it's kind of, it's a little bit of a longer Psalm 36 verses. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. You ever feel like that? That's what David's saying. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I'm a worm out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail, looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause. Those who seek to destroy me, I am forced to restore what I did not steal. You know my folly, O God. My guilt is not hidden from you. May those who hope in you 
not be disgraced because of me. O Lord, the God, the, o, o Lord, the Lord Almighty, may those who seek you not be put to shame because of me. O God of Israel, for I endure scorn for your sake, the shame, and shame covers my face. I'm a stranger in my brother's and alien to my own mother's sons. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. When I weep and fast, I must endure scorn. When I put on sackcloth, people make sport of me. Those who sit at the gate mock me, and I am the song of the drunkards. But I pray to you, O Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me or the depths swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O God, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love and your mercy, in your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Redeem me because of my foes. You know how I am scorned, disgraced, and shamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. May the table set before them become a snare. May it become retribution and a trap. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see and their backs be bent forever. Pour out, the, pour out wrath on them. Let your fierce anger overtake them. May their place be deserted and let no one dwell in their tents. For they persecute those who you wound and talk about the pain of those you hurt. Charge them with the crime upon crime and, and do not let them share in your salvation. May they be blotted out of the book of life and not be listed in, with the righteous. I am in pain and distress. May your salvation, O God, protect me. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hoofs. The poor will see and be glad and you, you who seek God, may your hearts live. O Lord, the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his captive people. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and all who move in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. The people who settle there will possess it. The children of the servants will inherit it. And those who love his name will dwell there. And then Isaiah 63. 66 chapters in Isaiah. We're in chapter 63. We've been reading Isaiah for a while. It is a long book. Who is this coming from Edom from Bozrah with his garments stained crimson? Who is this robed in splendor, striding forward in the greatness of his strength? It is I speaking in righteousness, mighty to save. Who are your, why are your garments red like those of one treading the winepress? I have trodden out the winepress alone from the nations. No one was with me. I trampled them in my anger. I trod them down in my wrath. Their blood splattered my garments and stained all my clothing. For the day of vengeance was in my heart and the year of redemption has come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled and no one gave support. So... My own arm worked salvation for me, and my own wrath sustained me. I trampled the nations in my anger. In my wrath, I made them drunk and poured their blood on the ground. Get the page turned here. Onion skin pages stick together. Okay. I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he is praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for the house of Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. He said, surely you, they are my people, sons who will not be false to me. And so he became the Savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed, and the angel of his presence saved them. In love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Yet they rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Then his people recalled the days of old, the days of Moses and his people. Where is, where is he who brought them out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who set the Holy Spirit among them, 
who sent his glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand, who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown, who led them through the depths like a horse in open country they did not stumble, like cattle they did not go to the plain. They were given rest for the spirit of the Lord. This is how they, you guided your people to make yourself to make for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from your lofty throne, holy and glorious, where are your where are your zeal and your might? Your tenderness and compassion are withheld from us. But you are our father through Abraham, though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father. Our redeemer from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so we do not revere you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes that you that you that you are that are your inheritance. For for a little while your people possessed your holy place, but now our enemies have trampled down the sanctuary. Where are we are yours from of old? but you have not ruled over them. They have not been called by your name. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today, for making a difference in our lives. Change us from the inside out by the truth we find here. Write it on our hearts. Work with the power of the Holy Spirit to make us new. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.